History has taught us that humanity has had to grow in significant ways over the millennia to get to where we are now. We're not only talking about things like weapons and certain technologies, but how we look at and treat the world as a whole, the medicines that we've made, and of course, what's considered good within a culture. Ancient Rome stands tall as one of the greatest empires and republics the world has ever known, and it's been romanticized by many over the years. But there were plenty of practices that were not exactly kosher in the slightest by today's standards. Here now are 20 creepy things that were normal in ancient Rome. Number 20. Slavery. Ironically, this first one should not be that much of a surprise given that many ancient nations didn't fear using slavery for one purpose or another. Moreover, there are multiple movies where slaves are shown being brought into Rome for various purposes, like with Russell Crowe's Gladiator where Maximus became a slave and then was put into the Colosseum afterwards. Make no mistake, Rome did not only throw slaves into the lion's den and expect them to fight, oh no, it was much worse than that. So let's have a look at what it was like to be a slave in ancient Rome. Rome had a very structured society in terms of its classes. At the top were the elite, either by wealth or station, and at the very bottom were the slaves. Much like many other cultures, slaves were not viewed as human, they were viewed simply as property, and that meant that their owners could do pretty much anything they wanted to them by law and nothing could be protested. And if you want some numbers as to how many slaves were in ancient Rome, it was stated that about 10% of the entire population of Rome were slaves, which meant that at a maximum, it would have been around 10 million people. Another thing to be clear on is that it wasn't just the social elite who had these slaves, many in other classes had them as well, hence the high numbers. There were even slaves who had command over other slaves. And while it's true that many of them were put into manual labor, some of them were given specialized tasks, and whenever they were written about in texts, it was hardly to sing their praises. The masters often wrote about how lazy or bad their slaves were. So on one hand, you can't really deny that slavery helped to influence Rome in a lot of ways. But you also can't deny that for a culture as advanced as Rome, they weren't afraid to dehumanize people just to keep their status and do as little work for themselves as possible. Sadly, that was something that many other cultures, which also included modern ones, kept up for over a millennia. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Executions by Beasts If there's one thing that Rome knew how to do better than basically any other kingdom in that period, it was to provide numerous forms of entertainment to people. You all know of the Colosseum or the chariot races and how they became a famous form, but there were more lower class forms of entertainment to keep the masses at bay. One such entertainment had to deal with executions, and it's not really all that surprising that people would turn out for an execution, as many over the course of history had been drawn to the macabre spectacle. But in ancient Rome, one special form of execution was to put the person charged with a crime up against a lion. Now, I'm not even joking one little bit here. The official name for such an action was Damnatio ad Bestias, or Condemnation to Beasts. Typically, this penalty was also applied to the worst of criminals, runaway slaves, and Christians. That's right, Christians had a very rough life during ancient Rome, and through much of its existence in fact, but that's another video for a different time. To all the people who were condemned this way, they had to simply endure the beasts that were thrown at them. Some of them were given weapons to fight, but when it's man versus lion or a similar kind of beast, it doesn't really end well for the human more times than not and thus the spectacle is born. The irony of this is that it was apparently a lower class form of entertainment, which is rather disturbing, and it also shows that death is something that people were enthralled by at the time, and they weren't exactly afraid to see death in all of its many and more brutal forms. Thankfully, lions and people are treated with far more respect now, well, by most people at least. Number 18. Roman Clothing Something that often gets shown off on TV shows and movies based in Rome is the clothing that the people wear. 
Obviously, they all wore clothing back in ancient times, but the message here is that clothes make the man or the woman, meaning that you could tell what class of a person they were simply based solely on the clothing that they wore. And it wasn't even solely the material of the clothes that could show off your rank, as the very color of your clothing could also provide someone with your status. Yellows, browns, blacks, and black and gray colors indicated poverty amongst the people, and it was such a moniker for them that you wouldn't find someone in the upper classes ever dreaming of adorning those colors. Reds, greens, purples, and blues, and all other bright colors were indicative of being rich, and the only color that was often shared by all classes would be white. Naturally, those within the higher echelons of power could do things like have their clothes custom made from the finest materials, while those who were in the lower castes had to take what they could use and do it for as long as possible because they couldn't really afford anything else. Sadly, that kind of divide between the rich and the poor of Rome was common throughout history. It's one of the many reasons why Rome may have seemed like a shining example of society on the outside, but was corrupt, divided, and broken on the inside. Number 17. Ancient Magic Here's one that honestly shouldn't surprise you. Given the lack of true science in ancient Rome, there were plenty of people who practiced various forms of magic and tried to use their services for the benefit of all classes. And I do mean all classes. Everyone from the poor that could afford it to the Roman elite that were willing to get their hands on various magical objects or to use oracles to try and predict their future. Healers were another kind of popular magic that one could find everywhere within Rome. Some people believed in magic so much that they would actually put magical murals on the outside of their home in order to try and ward off evil. What this goes to show is that people were willing to believe many things in ancient times because they had no reason not to. One could only wonder how many people in Rome truly believed that they were blessed by magic. Number 16. Vomitorium Oh. Trust me, I'm going to many very disgusting places in this video, but I thought it would be fun to begin with one that was actually a misconception versus a real place. Because there was actually a belief, amongst many, that ancient Romans had a place called the Vomitorium. It was a place where they would go and vomit to get their food out of their stomachs solely so that they could eat more. And why would they need to do that? Well, if you were within a certain class, you were often partaking in various feasts, and much like cinema has noted over the years, these feasts can be truly massive. So thus, they would need to purge their stomachs so they wouldn't appear to be rude by not eating more food. The good news is that this is not a real thing. In truth, the vomitorium is an architectural term used to describe the passageway or corridor of an amphitheater connecting the bank seats to the outside space. It refers to the passages where spectators could spew forth into their seats at public entertainment venues. While a weird way of describing something, the intent of the passageways was to allow for a quick and easy exit for numerous people at once after a performance. The irony is that the term is used for many things in architecture and beyond, but it's never been used to reference a place where you would puke your guts out. And for that, we should all be grateful. Number 15. Blonde Hair The history of hair is truly fascinating, as it's something that has evolved with humanity, which is why we have certain shades and prominence now versus back in ancient times. Blonde hair was a more recent adaptation when you consider humanity as a whole, and that's why it was a symbol of beauty to many in cultures like Greece and Rome. But there was always a catch with it now, wasn't there? In Rome's case, if you were a prostitute, you had to have blonde hair when you were outside doing your work. Thankfully, they didn't force the ladies to dye their hair, so they typically got wigs. Ironically, later on, the Romans would change their position on it, and suddenly blonde hair was the symbol of innocence, which obviously meant that prostitutes couldn't have that hair color. Talk about changing one's mind. Number 14. Lead Paste you want to hear an actual disgusting practice of Romans that led to various health issues? Well, think of this one as a precursor to things that we do in the modern day. Because back then, people's looks were just as important, especially if you were within the elite. And thus, you would do certain things to try and make yourself 
appear a certain way as you went to a party or through a crowd. One of the more dangerous things they did was going to certain lengths to make sure that their skin appeared to be pale or to give it a rose look. And to get that effect, they would put paste on their faces. But not just any paste, a lead paste. That's right, as in the metal that you really shouldn't deal with in various forms. There were multiple types of lead paste that were available to the upper elite, which included white and red, and they would use them all the time. As you could imagine, that would come with some very bad side effects, not the least of which was obviously lead poisoning. Yes, there are many who even speculate that the elite using this lead paste, as they did, were once one of the key downfalls of the empire because so many of the elite kept becoming poisoned by their own hands. And we still haven't even gotten to some of the more disgusting things that the Romans did during their time in the spotlight. Number 13. Brutal Executions Remember the execution that I talked about earlier of a person being basically forced to fight a lion? Well, there's another one of those, and it involves leather. And it also makes the option of facing the lion seem that much more desirable. Why? Because this execution with a name that I can't pronounce is the act of being sewn into a leather sack with a variety of live animals, which included a dog, a snake, a monkey, a hen, or even a rooster, and then you're thrown into the water. Yeah, it's for real. Equally as important, this was a kind of punishment that was done for specific crimes, mainly criminals who killed their parents or other near relatives. Apparently, it was something that happened a lot during the key period of Rome's history, and so this punishment was made to deal with that, and hopefully to deter others from doing the same thing. Our sympathies go on with the animals that had to die along with that human, though. Number 12. Roman Appetites Now, it's fortunate that humanity learned how to cook food and make certain meals, or else they may have died from starvation or be in the most basic of places food-wise. But what may creep you out about the higher-ups in Rome is that while they had plenty of access to your more standard meats and meals to dine on, they typically liked to be kind of exotic with their dishes. Gormans like the gluttonous emperor Elagabalus may have served up parrot heads or dolphin meatballs. Guests might have seasoned their dishes, no matter how fancy, with garum, a sauce made from fermented fish guts. Romans consumed the flesh of animals that came straight out of the arena and turned sacrificial blood into pudding and stuffed sausages, cooked pests, and even made them both into yummy treats and remedies for serious medical conditions. Or so they would tell you. Frankly, it's all kind of disgusting, and I'm just going to move on. Number 11. Medical Treatments Medicine in the ancient Roman world was pretty bad, and there's a very little amount of way that you could get around it. It's true that ancient Rome had great battlefield medicine at times, but that was more about trial and error than anything else, and they also needed to put everything they could on their soldiers to keep their legions conquering the world. As for the ailments of the more common folk variety, Romans would use just about anything and everything to try and make their blights go away, even if it was things like acne or warts. Yes, they had a whole lot of things that they would try, even including putting dung on various body parts or putting things like gold on them if they could afford them and more. To treat a headache, some Romans would seek out an elephant and try to get it to put their trunk on their head. Why? I don't really know, and I don't want to get into the madness of it all. Number 10. Hygiene Now, I've touched upon it lightly before, but make no mistake that there's a reason that people died very young in the ancient days. It was considered a miracle if you even lived to old age by how we define it now. And the reason that they kept dying young is that they've misunderstood the world and many of the processes by which you can actually get sick and die, such as not having proper hygiene. For example, you might know about the legendary and infamous Roman bathing houses. These were structures for Romans to bathe in a communal fashion, as in with multiple people all at once. Yes, the elite had baths that they could have all to themselves, but for the commoners of Rome, they had to go to a public bathhouse to bathe amongst each other. It's not really hard to imagine all the things that could go wrong with such a practice. Not that ancient Rome really cared. They thought it was such a great idea that they constructed massive bathhouses to hold more people and even made them very artistic. 
One could even make the case that these places were good for the people to bond, as they had to be nude to go into the water, and thus the clothing of class, which I've already touched upon, could not be shown nor flaunted. However, as you may have also guessed, these bathhouses were not exactly the cleanest things around. With so many people in them, they would have needed to change the water quite a bit to keep them clean, but it turns out they probably didn't do that all so much. So, in those waters, you'd find anything from dirt to oil, things like mildews and bacterias, and even literal feces. An emperor noted how bad the bathing houses were, and that should tell you something in the end. Number 9. Gladiatrix This one goes out to all the ladies, because it should not be so surprising that Romans did creepy and downright wrong things to women, given how they were perceived in that period. Many ancient cultures and current cultures don't really give women the respect they deserve, and in ancient Rome it was equally as bad. For example, you've heard the tales of female gladiators. They were known as the gladiatrix, and there were indeed some of them within Rome during certain periods of its history. But the reason that you never really hear stories about them is that they were actually rarely used. The few times that they were in the more grand entertainment areas like the Colosseum, they were seen simply as a novelty act and a rare spectacle, and some even described the female gladiators as Amazonian, a reference to Greek mythology. The problem, well, one of the problems at least, was that ancient Rome was so biased against women that the overall perception of them was that having them be warriors of any kind was kind of ridiculous. Furthermore, after a while, they were deemed inappropriate to have as fighters. There aren't even records of them being trained in gladiator combat, which might have meant that they were literally thrown in to die without even an attempt to give them a chance at survival. The reason this is both creepy and sad is that there have been plenty of female warriors throughout history, and women have proven to be just as strong if not stronger than men when allowed the chance to prove themselves. Sadly though, in a place such as Rome, they were rarely, if ever, given that chance because of how society viewed them as a whole. Number 8. Crime It's not hard to believe that a place like Rome had its fair share of street crime. I mean, after all, it was a big city and it had a lot of classes within it. But what may shock you was just how rampant the crime was, despite it being in the capital of this massive empire. It was so bad at certain points that there wasn't only crime, there were actually gangs. It was even unwise to go out at night within Rome because you weren't exactly in well-lit areas and thus you could have easily been targeted for an attack. Now, naturally, the higher-ups didn't do much about it because it didn't affect them, which was just putting more pressure on the more poor classes to try and survive everything. One could even go so far as to say that crime within Rome was a normal thing, and that's a horrifying thing to think about. Number 7. The Death of Slaves As already noted, the Roman Empire was infamous for how many slaves they had and how they were treated. But one thing that I left off was that when they wanted to really showcase their domination over people, they would kill them in one of the most brutal ways possible, that being crucifixion. While many may think that this was reserved for certain kinds of criminals, for slaves it was done for almost any reason that you could imagine. If they had committed any kind of crime, or even a perceived crime, they would be put to the cross. It's inhumane in many ways, and yet it was done virtually all the time in order to get rid of slaves who had so-called disobeyed. Number 6. Roman Toilets Now, I've talked about their medicine and their bathing habits and what they've put to their bodies food-wise. What else would there be to dissect in the Roman health culture that was disgusting? Ah yes, of course, their toilets. While the elite had their own toilets that they could use, the rest of the Romans had to use communal toilets. Oh, wonderful! Well, take a seat. And there was at least some space between them, but it's not hard to see how disgusting things could actually get in there. In fact, there was apparently a brush, which was their version of toilet paper, but instead of throwing it away after being used, it would be put into a solution to hopefully clean it so that the next person could use it right afterwards. I mean, seriously. How did the Romans even live that long? Number 5. Cosmetics Vanity is not a new thing. It's actually been around for a millennia, and across a lot of empires, whether you were Greek or Roman or Egyptian or something else entirely, you wanted to look as beautiful as possible when you went out. 
The problem for Roman ladies is that many of the cosmetics that they adorned were really, really foul-smelling, and it was bad. To counter it, they would utilize different scents, acquired from the aromas of blossoms and plants and seeds, and they were then mixed into a cream that was produced from fats and oils. I'm sure that many of you out there are happy that such smelly products are not the norm these days, though some of you might still say that it all really smells anyways. Number 4. Gladiator Blood Now, I've talked about gladiators too many times in this video, but there's a reason for that. They were a key part of Rome for better and for worse, and they were a key source of entertainment. And for those who were the gladiators, there was a chance at a better life if they could survive the challenges that were put in front of them. Those that stood tall were seen by society not only as men of strength and value, but ones who were blessed by the gods. And because of that, the lack of good medicine back in those days, their bodies were used for various practices. It was actually believed that the gladiator's blood could heal epilepsy and or infertility. The blood was collected and sold to the crowd, and when the body of the death gladiator was taken out of the arena, the sellers collected the still warm blood and sold it to the spectators. That's right, the guy would have literally just died, and then it would be siphoned for blood to sell to the crowd. And here's a hint in case you don't know, it didn't work. Trust me when I say that various other parts of the gladiator's bodies were used to cure ailments or even to be used as drugs, which is pretty strange and creepy, but it also goes to show how little ancient Rome and other cultures of the time knew about true medicine and what the body needed to survive. They were all willing to try anything and everything because they didn't know any better, and that was yet another reason for their death aside from the poor conditions within their cities. I could spend a really long time talking about all the various practices done to those gladiators, both living and dead, but I don't want to keep grossing you out, so we will simply move on. One key thing to be mentioned first, though, don't drink other people's blood. Only Dracula could do that without relative consequence. Number 3. The Ruler's Poison There are many common threads throughout the history of Rome, both in its Republic and Empire days, but easily one of the most long-lasting trends that happened within the realm was that various leaders of multiple ranks were dealt with in horrible ways. I'm talking, of course, of assassination when they got in someone's way, and it did happen quite a bit. Poisoning was one method that was very popular within Rome, and it got to the point where people were getting seriously paranoid about their next meal or drink being their last. And you may be thinking, well, that's why they have royal tasters and drinkers to ensure they didn't get poisoned, right? I'm sure that some of them did have that. However, others took a quite different approach. One ruler in Rome was so worried about poison that he decided to acclimate his body to various types of it so that he could be immune. Ironically, the practice had been done by various cultures and people all over the years, but with varying results depending on how they did it. In this case, it did actually work. He slowly built up a tolerance to the standard poisons of the era, and thus he couldn't be assassinated by it. And therein lies the irony. You see, his death was coming closer, and he knew it. He was going to be attacked by an angry mob and feared that brutal kind of death. So instead, he decided that he would take the noble way out and just poison himself. Except in the end, he couldn't do it because he had built up such an immunity. No matter how much that he tried, he just could not die via poison, and the mob apparently brutally stabbed him to death anyways. Number 2. Incitatus This one is almost too funny to mention, but I have to talk about it because it will just seem too insane. However, it's not. We all likely know people who cherish animals more than others, like the crazy cat lady or the people who dress their dogs in sweaters because they think they look adorable and call them their children. Here's a hint, they're not your children, and they never look adorable. Anyway, in Rome, there was apparently an emperor who was so fond of his horse that he decided to try and make it a consul. And for those of you who do not know how the ancient hierarchies worked in Rome, a consul was the highest elected public official of the Roman Republic. Yeah, that's right, this emperor was so fond of his horse that he wanted to make it into an elected official. But he went farther than that to show his appreciation. Supposedly, the horse had 18 servants for itself and lived in a marble stable, walked in a harness decorated with rare and special stones and jewels, and even dressed in purple and ate from an ivory manger. 
Thankfully, history has been a bit more clear on the story, and the horse never actually made it to the rank of consul, though it may have been a priest. However, there are some accounts that state the horse never even existed in the first place, or that it's simply a legend that was exaggerated so that the stupidity of certain leadership could be expressed amongst the people. Needless to say, if we did know of a political leader that valued a horse more than people under their care, I'd want a new leader. Number 1. Mouthwash Now, arguably, and most disgustingly, we have what Romans used for mouthwash. Would you like to take a guess at what disgusting things they did to get their mouth fresh and keep their teeth white? They used urine. That's right, they would get urine from people or animals and then use it as a mouthwash to try and brighten their teeth. Which is disgusting, vile, crude, and all that stuff, but there is a twist in the tale that you probably won't see coming. The practice? actually worked. Urine contains ammonia, a compound that is capable of acting as a cleansing agent, meaning that you could feasibly use it as a mouthwash. It is absolutely disgusting to think that something like that could work, and yet there it is. It ends up being a little hilarious because I've blasted Rome for their insane practices, and yet with this one, they actually got it right. That's all from the realm of ancient Rome and all the creepy stuff that happened within its borders. Were you stunned by the things that these people were openly willing to do to themselves, others, animals, and so on? And which ones did you find the most creepy? What things do you know about Rome that could have easily been on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.